Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here. And it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be going over today is components and resultants. And we are going to be doing the problems shown on the screen. And this will be our 12th part in this series. So what we have going on here is we have a disabled, disabled car. The automobile is pulled by means of two ropes as shown. Knowing that the tension in rope AB is 750 pounds, determine the tension in rope AC and the value of the angle of alpha so that the resultant force exerted at A is a 1200 pound force directed along the axis of the automobile. So what we really have going on here is for some reason we have two people pulling this car, but some reason they're not deciding to pull it right down the middle. They are pulling at some kind of angle here. So we have AB and we are told that this is 750 pounds. We do not know what AC is and we do not know what this angle is, but the value of AC and this angle are such that the resultant force between these two ropes is 1200 pounds and it's directed along the horizontal axis. So if we want to draw a free body diagram for this portion, taking A as our center here, this is what we would have going on. So there's our X and there's our Y. We would have our resultant force of 1200 pounds along the X axis. And then we would have our two ropes in tension, which this one being 750 pounds up here at 30 degrees off the horizontal. And then our unknown FAC down here, which is alpha below the horizontal. So we're also given a key piece of information in the fact that this resultant force is direct along the X. So the resultant force between these two is along the X axis. So what that means is that there is no component of these two when they combine in the vertical direction. So what that means is that if we were to sum forces in the Y direction, they would all tally up to be zero. And if we were to sum forces in the X direction, they would tally up to be 1200 pounds. <clears throat> so we can utilize these two equations to find our FAC and our alpha. So let's go ahead and write these out. Let's do the FY first. Well, the FY is going to be 750 pounds. And to get the 750 into the x-axis, we have to multiply by the cosine of 30. It'd be cosine because that is adjacent to the x and cosine is adjacent. Oh, I'm sorry. Sine, because we're not doing the x-axis, we're doing the y-axis. It'd be vertical, so that would be sine of 30. Sorry about that. And I'll just move this down a little bit later. So we have the 750, which is the vertical direction. It is going upward because this arrow is up, so the component will be going upward. And we're going to take up as positive. So this will be positive 750 sine of 30. Then FAC is going down and to the right. So its vertical direction will be going downward. So this would be minus my FAC. And this would also be sine of my alpha angle because the angle of alpha is off the X. We're looking in the Y direction. That is opposite and opposite is associated with sine. Well, can't solve for FAC or sine alpha in this case. So whenever this happens, let's just go to the other equilibrium equation, which we know has to be a total of 1,200 pounds. So summing forces in our x direction here, well, this would not be equal to zero. It's going to be equal to 1,200 pounds. So we would have our 750 pounds, this time cosine of 30 degrees, because the cosine, because the angle is off of the x, so cosine is adjacent to that. It will be pointed to the right, because this is up and to the right. So the component in the X direction has to be matching that direction. So it'd be positive. And then FAC will also be going to the right because it is down into the right. So this will be plus FAC, and this will be cosine of alpha. And these two have to come together to be 1,200 pounds in that resultant direction along the X axis. Well, once again, I cannot solve the X direction by itself. But I do have two equations with two unknowns. So what I can do here is substitution. I can get one of my terms equaling an equation that contains the other and then plug it back in. So from my f of y equation, what I can do is I can rearrange and I would have FAC times the sine of alpha would be equal to 750 pounds times the sine of 30. If I just rearrange this taking FAC to the opposite side, well, then FAC is just going to be 750 
pounds times the sine of 30, and then all of that divided by the sine of alpha. Well, now that I have everything in terms of FAC, what I can do is take this portion and plug it into here in my X equation, and then everything will only be having alpha as the unknown. So let's do this. So rewriting the FX equation with that substitution, I end up with 750 pounds cosine of 30 plus my new FAC, which is 750 sine of 30 divided by the sine of alpha. All of that is times the cosine of alpha, and that is equal to 1,200 pounds. Okay, let's do some simplification here and get this simplified down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 750 cosines of 30, and I'm going to take it to the other side, so I'm subtracting off 1,200, and then I'm going to simplify this term down. So this term right here becomes 750, and it will be sine of 30 times the cosine of alpha, and all of that divided by the sine of alpha is equal to 1,200 minus off this portion, which comes out to be 550.48. Okay, so what do we do with cosine of alpha in the numerator and sine of alpha in the denominator? Well, using trig identification here in trig identities, when you have cosine of alpha divided by the sine of alpha, well, that equals one over the tangent of that same angle. So we can substitute this in here, and that way we have alpha occurring only in one spot. So doing this trig substitution, we end up with 750 sine of 30 divided by the tangent of my alpha is equal to the 55048. All righty, so now that I have alpha just in a single place here, it's much easier to solve for. So I am just going to rearrange over here. So basically what we have is alpha is equal to the tangent inverse of 750 sine of 30 divided by 550.48. And that will give me, because this portion right here becomes 0 0.6812. So that angle then taking the tangent inverse of that gives me 34.3 degrees. And that's one of my answers. That is the angle in which that rope is at. Well, it's also asking what is the force in the rope? So we found the angle alpha, now we just need FAC. Well, what is FAC? Well, we already have it written right here in terms of alpha. So let's go ahead and just fill that in. So FAC will be 750 sines of 30 divided by the sine of my angle of alpha, which is 34.3 degrees. And this gives me an FAC of 665.5 pounds of force in that general down right direction. So those are my two answers, my tension in my rope and the angle. Now, if you want to double check your answers here, what you can do is just take both of these for alpha and FAC and plug them back into these equations and make sure it equals zero for the Y and 1200 pounds um, for the X. So this was using the rectangular method, um, going pretty much backwards from what we've pretty uh, done with other videos, because in other videos we were given everything and then finding the resultant. This one we had the resultant and we worked backwards to find one of our components. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you wanna see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.